Proverbs chapter 27. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And James says we ought to say, Lord willing. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen later. And when I preach Saturday mornings at the farmer's market, you're not even guaranteed Saturday afternoon. Now, it's not to ever not make plans, but don't, oh, well, you know, tomorrow, you don't know. And it's not always guaranteed. Well, death, a disease may get you. Tragedy will get you. It's amazing what one phone call will do. Let another man praise thee, and not thy own mouth. A stranger, not thine own lips. If there's any praise, let it not be from you. Let it not be me, myself, and I. And then let not your praise be to conjure other people to lift you up. That's not right. That's not the ways. So in other words, boasting, pride, how great I am. And for a couple more days, I can talk about politics, and that's what the politicians do. They boast about themselves. It's the other guy's fault, but me, I've got all the answers. And then you're going to vote for that guy who is honoring himself when the Bible says you're not to. A stone is heavy. Yes, it is. And the sand is weighty. And it's true. But a fool's wrath is heavier than their boat. When a fool gets beyond anger and wrath, and being foolish and folly, you would say that the wrath itself carries no weight. A mere, minor. But his reactions has weight. Nero was a fool and burning down his whole entire city. The wrath of Adolf Hitler upon every Jew and the murdering of the Jews. The foolish Adolf Hitler in his wrath for the hatred for the Jewish people. Man, the consequences. Do you realize all the people that were condemned to hell because of that fool? The unsaved Jews, millions if not billions, All the people that were involved in the Nazi party, the Bible said, if you curse the Jew, I will curse you. And then wrath is cruel. <laughs> you come right into verse 3, right into verse 4. Wrath is cruel. Anger is outrageous. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. But who is able to stand before envy? The, the, the thoughts and the feelings that I didn't get what I thought I deserved. They got credit for what. And then the actions of the envy does not have to be physical. It could be in all in the thoughts of the person with envy. An open rebuke is better than secret love. Somebody comes up to you, uh, preaching, or personally one-on-one, -on -one, and before you, tells you of your errors, of your sin, of your ways, is much better than somebody they just love you and they're not going to say nothing and they're going to let their love just pray and I won't tell them. Sometimes the rebuke is healthy and wise. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. And 
Usually, if you've been wounded by a friend, it's accidental. It's unjust. It's, it was not meant to be. It happened. Probably giggling it off a little after a, little, after a while. <laughs> you know, your friend comes along and he accidentally pokes you in the eye. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that really. Okay, you know, he didn't mean it. It's not a practical joke, as we saw in verse 26 and 19. It's just, you know, this friendship, they're just fooling around to something. Wow, that hurt. But the kisses of the enemy are deceitful, and that's Judas. Judas went up and kissed Jesus. I'll identify Jesus is the man that I walk up to and kiss. That's Jesus. Judas received, I mean, uh, Absalom received kisses from the people, and he was an enemy of David. <clears throat> the soul, the full soul loatheth, hated a honeycomb. Honey shows up 52 times in the Old Testament verse. And four times in the New Testament. Honeycomb shows up eight verses in the Old Testament and one verse in the New Testament. But the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. That, that, hungry, that full soul, uh, honey, uh, come on, give me something. Uh, no. I can go for some chocolate cake. I can go for some pudding, go for a pizza. No. Honey. But the man that is hungry, he'll eat anything that's healthy. I'm reading stories about the Revolutionary War you know, and the Civil War. Last night I read the rations of the food of the soldiers were just scarce. The Civil War. And he's right, and he said, I forget now, I think. Not blueberry. Was it was a kind of berry? He says, man, he said, I just devoured those things. They were big and fat and chunky. He said, man, those things I were great. He said, he said, we camped one time amongst a cornfield. And you know, we would pick the ears. And we didn't have butter or anything. And we would put the ears. They said he wrapped it in mud or, or something. Something, I forget what else he said. He said, we just put it in the fire until all the husk and everything burnt away. And then we, oh, it's just delicious. There are people I've heard from a missionary in Ethiopia. And they eat grass. But people in Florida pay people to cut and, and tend to and take care of. In Ethiopia, they eat what Americans spend money to take care of. Grass. That's their only food. As a bird that wandereth from her nest. Now I'm going to assume that it would be a mother bird. Or even a baby bird. That's not to be so. As a matter of fact, the law states if you're to find a bird in her eggs or her chicks on the ground, then that you're to pick it up and put it back. And I forget if it said you can take the eggs. I think you say you can take the eggs and leave the mother. I think that's what the law is. So is a man that wandereth from his place. A husband father need not to be at the bowling unless he's bowling with his his wife and his children. Now he has a place to go work. That's right. If a man wanders off into another bedroom with another woman or a man with another a, a woman with another man, that, that's not natural, it's not right. A woman that wanders away from her husband or children for whatever night she wants to have.
Bible says, as much as it's a bird away from her nest. I'm not talking about, you know, we have a men, we'll have a men even men day at the church or a woman even woman day at the church. I mean, I'm not talking about those rarities. I'm talking about where the man, talking about men, he has a specific time that he's, you know, he's got to get away from it all. And it, it, it's a routine. It's not, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go I'm on a trip. I'm going to go, you know, <coughs> a thing that, you know, whatever it is, just, you know, occasionally. When the occasions become too much of occasion, that's what I'm trying to say. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So does the sweetness of a man's friend by the hearty counsel. And a friend could be good. And a good friendship can be good for your heart and for your soul. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. Neither, well, let's, thy own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. Now, look at verse 11 real, real quick. My son. Solomon writing to Rehoboam. Now let's take our Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 12. First Kings chapter 12. Brand new Bible, I can't turn the pages, and an old Bible, I can't turn the pages. Now let's take what we just learned and what Rehoboam does not learn. 1 Kings 12.6. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men and stood before his father, Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, How do I advise these people? Verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, which stood before him. Verse 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Had Rehoboam listened to what his father wrote him, there would have been no, no north and south Israel. I know it was of God. And God used the foolishness of Rehoboam that, you know, all the wise counselor of Solomon, his father, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to go to my high school buddies. They know more. Thy own friend and thy friend's friend forsake not. He forsook the friendship of, of Solomon, his father. Neither go into thy brother's house in a day of calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother that is far off. And we, we've seen this before. There is a closer relationship of friends than brothers. You choose your friends, but you don't choose your kin. That brother and sister, you and they may be, you may love them, you may care for them, you may get a well, but you didn't choose each other. You are there because you're mother and father. But a friendship is you, hey, I like you, you like me. And it says, uh, the neighbor that's near than a brother far off. And your brother's having trouble, and you fly all the way in. What was the purpose for you to fly? What? What's going on here? And it's calamity. The guy's already got trouble. And now you flew in? Why? I don't need you here. I got my friend. I got my coworker. My son. Rhea Bone, or God speak to us, be wise. He wasn't. <laughs> and make thy that make and make my heart glad. Do you think that Solomon would have been glad? I mean Solomon was dead. 
But do you think that Solomon would, would have been glad to realize that his son split the entire nation of Israel into two and it has not gotten together and will not get together unto Jesus Christ? He said, well, what about the 144,000? Dan and Ephraim are not even mentioned of the 144,000. And the father is saying to his son, make my heart glad. And how do you make the heart glad? We've already seen a, a wise son, his mother and father, and then a foolish son with his father and mother. We've seen the relationship. I may answer him that reproaches me. And that says somebody has brought charges against the child. We'll take the prodigal son. Guy comes in. Hey, I, I heard your son was, you know, I heard he left. I heard he took all his money. I, I heard he's living at the pig, the pigsty. Yeah. But he's home now. And he, man, he, that guy, he repented. He got right. And he wanted to be one of my servants. You believe that? That punk of my son, he got right. Man, I love I love him more because his brother got all upset. But man, you know what? I, I, I got him the best robe. I put shoes on his feet. We had a gala of a celebration. And yeah, he was down in the pigsty. Yeah, he did. But he learned. And he got right. And I'm pleased to have him home. Now, what could the father have said about the prodigal son before he came home? I heard your son left. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Kid thinks he knows everything. A prudent man foreseeth evil. That's prudence. I'll give you a great example. That there's no, hardly any prudence today in the world. At least in America. At least in Florida. A prudent man would not just step out in traffic where there could be cars. That's not prudence. Prudence was not the man going down the road the other day in his bike in the middle of the road. That's not prudence. Prudence was not the man that went around three cars today to get in the left-hand lane and shoot across oncoming traffic so he can go wherever he's going stupidly quickly. That's not prudence. Prudence is not, I mean, okay, you may run that yellow and change the red. Okay, that's accidental. Prudence is not running through the red light. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there may be a law you have to stop for pedestrians in, in the crosswalk. That ain't going to do you no good when you're laying up in the hospital for the rest of your life or you even die. The law can't protect you from dying. <clears throat> and hideth himself. When Proverbs chapter 1, come, let's go murder someone and, and let's go steal his stuff. And you get out of there. And you I get away from him. But the simple, okay, here's a, here's the here's this definition. Simple, they pass on and are punished. The, pun, the simple, he gets hit by the car. The simple, he gets arrested. The simple, he gets, I, I, I watch this program in parking waters and, and people, they park under a sign that says you can't park there or you can only park there a certain amount of time. And they, don't, and they get all upset because they got a ticket. Prudence would say, go to a parking garage, find another spot. The simple idiot parks there and then tries to fight the parking ticket much deserved. He's so simple. And it's, I love the program when, when you know, they're fighting with the person and, they, and the, the, the traffic ticket, right? He just said, no parking, no standing, bus no, no parking after 4 p.m. And then you look at the person holding the ticket angry. No prudence. Guy's simple. 
And we're not talking about maybe, you know, the parking meter was, was broken. Yes, it truly broken. I was only going to run for a minute. That's why I didn't put no coins in it. And that's why if you put one coin, it gives you a few minutes. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger. And take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Now the law forbidden a Jew to apply interest rates. And a Jew was to trust a Jew. But if there was a business, if there was a press, and you needed collateral, and that's what he's talking about, if it's a stranger, somebody you don't know, a Gentile, take some collateral. Well, let me have your driver's license. Let me have, uh, you know, your whatever value you have, and I'll give it back to you when you pay it back. And remember, too, sometimes friendship could be strange. I've got many people in my life who've been my friends. And they're not there behind me anymore. They're gone. He that blesses his friend with a loud voice rises early in the morning. It shall be counted for a curse to him. And, you know, it's, I'm his friend. Me and David were just best pals. David and I just passed by. And it's like, shut up. What are you doing? It doesn't need to be, you know, it, it will figure itself out. It's a man with a big mouth for big, stupid reasons. And then again, what we've already read, if you want to be friendship, let him proclaim the friendship, not you.